This is another Classics related freebie from ClassicsProfessor.com. One of my duties as a Classics Professor is to lead tours to Greece. People have lots of great memories, but I think one of the most enduring memories is the food. And in particular, this mysterious rich Greek yogurt. You can buy this in the States, but it is very expensive. I was in the store recently and I saw three ounces of Greek yogurt for sale for about two dollars, which makes over forty dollars for two quarts, which is a decent amount you're going to need for a family for a couple of weeks. I can show you how to make homemade Greek yogurt for less than, much less than eight dollars for two quarts. Secret is this. Greek yogurt has a higher fat content than you typically get in American yogurt and most of the whey, which is that liquidy substance, has been strained out. If you're already making yogurt, that's all you have to do. You just add whipping cream to your mixture at the beginning of the process and then at the end, like right here, you just take this thickened yogurt and put it into a colander that has been lined with some cloth and strain out some of the whey. But if you're not already making yogurt, I have a method that I developed using only ordinary kitchen utensils. And here it is. This is what you need. On the left you have some yogurt. It doesn't have to be a whole pint. Is that a pint or a quart? It doesn't have to be a lot. You're only going to need a quarter of a cup. And once you've made your yogurt, you can take your yogurt that you've already made and use that as the starter. Some people uh, online will insist that you use yogurt starter, which is something that you buy dried in a packet. But what, why, why do you do that? You've got the bacteria you need in yogurt you can buy in the store very cheaply. Heavy whipping cream in the center, a gallon of milk, any kind of milk will do, and then something to steady your hand. Here you see me pouring two cups of whipping cream into a gallon of milk, and that is in an ordinary saucepan. What you're going to do at this point is scald the milk, which means you're going to bring it up to 180 degrees really slowly. You're not going to burn it, but you're going to bring it up to 180 degrees slowly, stirring it all the time, and then when it gets to be 180 degrees, you take it off the heat. There you go. Uh, stirring is really important, but you know this is a basic kitchen technique. You put milk on the stove, you don't walk away from it. When it gets about 150 degrees, you're going to start stirring really vigorously. Let me tell you one thing I do, is I'll turn up the heat maybe halfway and then get the milk slowly up to 120, 130 degrees. And then I'll crank it up uh, really high and then I'll stand there constantly stirring the milk on the bottom to keep it from burning until it gets to be 180 degrees. Once it gets to be 180 degrees, take it off and I plunge it into an ice bath. That cools it off more quickly and it also keeps a film of milk from developing on the top. You want to cool this down to 110 degrees and with an ice bath and a little stirring, it will take you no more than about 10 minutes. Once you've got your milk down to 110 degrees, pull out about a half a cup of it mix it in with a quarter of a cup or half a cup of yogurt, stir it up really well. That's going to be your starter. Here you see I'm pouring the starter into the milk mixture which is at 110 degrees. No hotter. If it's, hot, if it's hotter than 110 degrees you're going to kill the bacteria and you're just going to waste the afternoon. Whisk it in really well to distribute the starter throughout the milk and then you decant it off into jars. And this is the process this is the beginning of the process where you thicken the yogurt. There you go. Pouring it in. You could use any kind of jar actually if if you want if you have enough drinking glasses, you can pour it into to glasses. And there you go. There is the milk mixture with the bacteria in it ready for thickening. You're going to keep these jars at 110 degrees for about four hours. And you can do that in any way you want. You can put it into the oven. If you have an oven whose temperature is accurate enough that you can get, keep it at 110 degrees, that's, that's fine.
What I do is I plunge it into this water bath in my canner and then I make sure that the water stays at 110 degrees by turning the uh, surface coils really low and it seems to work. You're going to want to watch it constantly because unless you know that your stove is going to be 110 degrees at a certain setting, your temperature of the water could race off. I've had that happen before. You know, I thought I had it, 110 degrees, perfect. I went off and read a book, came back, and the water was 180 degrees, killed all of the yogurt, the bacteria, and that was it. So watch it constantly. You know, every 10 minutes, make sure it's not getting over 110 degrees. After four hours or so, this is what you'll have. It's a little bit difficult to see in this picture, but in the center of the jar, there's what looks like a bar of soap. And around it is a very thin layer of this way of liquid. Now this process can be heartbreaking because it takes can take four hours, but nothing seems to happen for the first three hours. And you're, you're going to be anxious. The first time you do this, you want to be checking it a lot, looking in to see whether it's thickening. But the first three hours, it's just going to look like milk. And you're going to think, this is not working. It is working. The coagulation, the thickening, happens like all at once in the last half hour. It just, like, it gets the idea and suddenly it thickens. So don't be disturbed if for the first three hours nothing seems to be happening. It will work. Now you're to the point of straining off the whey. A very simple process. I use a bowl up on the top there, you see, the green bowl. A standard salad colander. And then I use cloth. And the cloth that I use that seems to be just perfect is a t-shirt. It's an old t-shirt that I've washed, obviously, and cut it into uh, this strip that you see here. And there you see I'm pouring it into the t-shirt cloth that has been draped over the colander. Still pouring. And that's going to be your setup. Oh, I want to say one thing. Don't try to do this with cheesecloth. Cheesecloth has interstices that are too large for this. If you do use cheesecloth, you're going to end up with a lot of your yogurt in the whey. And that's no good. You want to eat the yogurt. You want to throw the whey away. Okay, so this is what you set up. You can put it in the refrigerator. You can leave it on the counter. I've done both. And the dripping is going to take a long time. You know, seven or eight hours. Maybe even overnight. And in the morning, here you have it. This is it. On the right, you have this yellow liquid, which is the whey. And then on the left, you have thickened Greek yogurt. Yay. Now, don't throw out the whey yet. Because if you find that the yogurt is too thick, you can take a little bit of the whey and put it back in and stir it back in to get the consistency that you want. This is the whey. This is the yogurt. I'm sorry. This is the yogurt that I got out of this batch and it's a little bit too thick, so I ended up putting a quarter of a cup of whey in it, stirring it back in, and I ended up with this. Two beautiful quarts of Greek yogurt. It's unflavored, so you're going to want to put your sugar in it or whatever you do to yogurt. This is also the basis of the ubiquitous Greek side dish tzatziki, which is a cucumber, olive oil, and garlic um, condiment. It's like ketchup. And they put it on everything. You, you, you might find recipes for tzatziki using yogurt. Don't use anything other than Greek yogurt, this thickened Greek yogurt, because it just won't come out the same. It'll come out really runny, and you'll think, this is a big disappointment. Why am I doing this? You can use this yogurt. So you can take, you know, a half a cup of this or a cup and make tzatziki and have that ready to go. And there it is. That's what it will look like. You can see that it's just hanging off the spoon. It should be thick like that, almost like ice cream. It's just wonderful. Well, I hope this helps. Do give it a try. It's not hard at all. If I can do it, and I'm just a Greek professor, if I can do it, you can do it.